Shanti, can you talk to us more about the difference between passive meditation and active meditation? Yes. Passive meditation is the sitting meditation. So you close your eyes in a steady position. So you have no distraction from outside. So you can go deep inside and explore. Active meditation is applying during the day while walking, driving, working or talking. Active meditation means keeping the awareness, following Gnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. All this you can practice while you are active. In passive meditation you have no distraction so you can go deep inside. Passive meditation helps you with active meditation. Suppose you did short passive meditation, then it will give clarity, it will give you direction so that your day will flow much better. It's just like you look at a map before you go on a journey mm -hmm. and you know where you have to go so you can plan your trip accordingly instead of zigzag and wasting your time, you can use it efficiently. So passive meditation like a map. Now, active meditation, whatever you do during active life influences when you are sitting quietly. So if you are doing lots of activities, especially with attachment, then when you sit for meditation, your mind will be restless. So activities you should do is minimize them as much as you can. And the one that you have to do, you cannot minimize remove attachment from them so you leave the activities behind you leave it behind when you come your mind is clear so passive and active meditation there are many meditation techniques just like climbing a mountain there are several paths you know that could be direct path which is steeper and more difficult and others are going around which mm -hmm. takes long time so Gnana Yoga is considered direct path. Mm -hmm. Though it is direct, it is dangerous also. Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga is going around slowly and is safer path for most people. But there is no distinction between Gnana Yoga, Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Uh, Gnana and Karma are two major wings. Gnana means a knowledge and action. These are the two major paths Krishna described. But Bhakti is a tail. Bhakti gives guidance and momentum. So even if you are practicing yoga of heart or yoga of action, you can always use devotion. Because if you have devotion, you can do Gnana Yoga properly. If you have devotion, you work with awareness. Another yoga is Raja Yoga. So even if you follow Gnana Yoga, Karma Yoga or Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga is suitable for everyone, especially in today's society. Raja Yoga is total yoga, Hatha Yoga, that is physical yoga, proper nutrition, proper yoga exercises, breathing. These are very good tools and Raj Yoga is meditation. So these tools are useful for all the branches. So before in the old scriptures, all the great masters emphasize only prayers and meditation. They did not talk about breathing or yoga position or watching the diet because they had no need for describing diet because food was natural. No need for exercises because the life, living was so difficult. They got the exercise mm -hmm. and breathing. But today's society, you can succeed much better in your meditation if you, your body is in better shape and also you do breathing, you quiet the mind. So in Buddhism, for example, Buddha recommend only awareness of the breath. You know, anapanasati. Anapana is prana and apana. Prana is incoming breath. Apana means outgoing breath. Sati means smruti. 
Spruti means memory or awareness. Awareness of incoming and outgoing breath, that was the only thing he gave about breathing. But in yoga, there are techniques, cleansing breathing, alternate nostril breathing. They could be very useful tool, even if you practice Buddhist meditation. Or if you do it mantra chanting, you are in devotion. These people ignore some of dietary discipline and <coughs> things like that. They just are dedicated to worshipping and chanting. They can always benefit. So I consider we can utilize all aspects. But all aspects are like a means that help you with the goal. The goal remains the same. But don't get distracted. People get distracted. They get so much into diet. They get so much into yoga exercise. They get so much into breathing. They get into fasting or natural foods. Or it becomes means. So don't get caught into means. Use them as necessary. People get into subliminal tapes. They get into crystal, magnetic healing, mm -hmm. you know, all the adjustment, pranic healing, and um, all kind of things. They're means. It doesn't matter. You can use them. But if you use too many means, you get lost. Mm -hmm. So don't lose your focus. Keep the focus and whatever you need, use them for that time being. Don't get stuck on it. People get so much stuck on it, like Reiki is the only thing. You don't need anything. Mm -hmm. It's this Tai Chi is the only thing you don't need anything else. You know, this is the only way. That is not the only way. Mm -hmm. We just have to use whatever suits us. We have to use combination of the paths, but we have to be revolutionary and change as necessary. Don't get stuck on one path. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, then you have joy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you get stuck. Mm -hmm.